Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, beginning with verse 55. <clears throat> Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout they all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. Please stand with me and read Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16 by half verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver, Deliver me, me in your, in your righteousness. righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make, Make haste, haste to deliver, to deliver me. me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the, For the sake, sake of, of your name, name lead, lead me and guide, and guide me. me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For, For you, you are, are my tower of strength. strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For, For you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed me, me, O Lord, O, Lord, o God, the God of truth. truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue, Rescue me from, from the hand of my enemies, enemies and, and from, from those, those who, who persecute, persecute me. me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And, and in, in your, your loving, loving kindness, kindness save, save me. me. The second reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, starting at verse 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to, you know the, pla- the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, The one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So you know, it's, it's possible to stir up a really big hornet's nest when someone changes the status quo. When I was a Boy Scout years ago, there was a plan to change the whole ranking system when I was 13, right in the middle of Scouts. And when the announcement was made of the change, the boys were told that if they could earn their Eagle rank, which is the highest rank in Scouting, under the old system within one year, then they would be grandfathered in with the old rules. But if they could not, then they would have to go back and earn all the new requirements to try to earn their eagle rank under the new rules. Well, of course, there were very loud howls of protest from those who wondered why it was necessary to fix something that wasn't broken. And for those of us who were relatively close, well, within shooting distance of the top rank, the pressure was really on. I was just finishing up my star scouting rank at the time, and I figured that if I didn't make eagle under the old rules, then I probably would never earn it. It would be too difficult to go back in and fill in all the new requirements. And that was true. Some boys raced to finish their requirements. Others got angry or discouraged. Some gave up and dropped out. As it turns out, there must have been a tremendous backlash against uh, or, or pushback against the new system because within about maybe four years, the whole system reverted to what it had been before. Over this past month, if you have tuned in to any of our live stream services or watched any of the recorded uh, services online, 
then you may recall that in my sermons, I have argued that with his resurrection, Jesus actually brought about a new creation, which is nudging its head into this old one, eventually to replace it altogether. And last week, I talked about how early Christians tried, with the help of the Holy Spirit of God, to live in a whole new and different way of being human forgiving one another as they themselves had been, been given forgiveness, sharing with those who are in need, even if it costs them something, and trying even to love their enemies. They did this because they believed that Jesus had made them citizens of God's kingdom, agents of this new creation. Christ had launched himself and God's plan into this broken world. In fact, Peter describes this new reality for these new Christians in this way. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Last week, earlier in Peter's first letter, we saw how a reaction to, uh, against this new creation was beginning to occur since Peter encouraged the first readers of his letter not to be ashamed to suffer for doing right, which means that obviously there was some persecution. This is not surprising because, of course, if nothing else, Jesus shook the status quo right, back, right down to the root This week, the readings give us both a wider view of Jesus' challenge uh, to the way of things that, uh, the way things had always been done, as well as a glimpse into um, the violent reaction against Jesus and his new creation. From the Acts of the Apostles, After having said many of the same things, actually, that Jesus had said in his own earthly ministry, in today's reading, St. Stephen, we see, is facing the extreme persecution for his words, and uh, and he says, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But his listeners covered their ears And with a loud shout, all rushed together against him, and they stoned him to death. St. Peter, in his first letter, warns, for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And this is a quote that Jesus himself had repeated in his own earthly ministry from Psalm 118. And finally, from John's gospel, we hear Jesus' own tremendous challenge to the status quo. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, if you don't think that Jesus can be offensive, just try quoting that last verse in mixed company. You may find that people still react to Jesus in angry ways. Jesus was and is challenging a worldview with these words. And even today, people do not like their worldviews called into question. In the Acts reading, that same challenge to the worldview in Jerusalem at the time is what cost Stephen his life, of course, because the temple was corrupt and under judgment, he basically is saying. If you go back and read the larger story, and God's people have once again rejected a prophet, as they always did, all through their history, although this one was even greater than a prophet. And the chief priest and the hardline Pharisees knew that Stephen's accusations were fighting words against the status quo. And so they fought. They stirred up the crowd. And Stephen ended up getting stoked. Stephen did say offensive things, actually, although they happened to be accurate. 
But since you see he was talking about Jesus, his message, which seemed to be one of judgment, was actually about suffering and about forgiveness and about reconciliation. And the proof that this was actually the case was that instead of calling down curses on his persecutors, which would have been expected in the Jewish tradition of martyrdom, just read the Psalms if you want a few examples. Instead, Stephen prayed for their forgiveness. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Maybe that's one of the reasons Paul was able to be chosen as an apostle later. Who in the history of the world has ever done that? Only Jesus, who from the cross prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen is following directly the example of his Lord because he sees the new creation at work and in reality. Already these Christians were trying to live as Jesus lived, even if it cost them their lives. Imagine trying to change the world by something other than manipulation or power or money or violence. But these early Christians believed that the world had already been changed by Jesus. It's just that everybody didn't know it yet. Well, this unapologetic and yet at the same time non-judgmental understanding of living as a Christian witness is hard to balance in the modern world that you and I live in. Do we really think of ourselves as a chosen race or part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation or God's own people? I mean, that can be tricky. Sometimes, in fact, Christians have claimed this mantle only to use it as a club to bang over the heads of other people that they consider to be on the outside. You're not a Christian. You're going straight to hell. As if it were our prerogative to consign anyone to heaven or hell. The trick and the corrective for us Christians might be to always keep in mind St. Peter's very next line in his first letter that we heard today, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Peter is reminding us that anything, any status that we have with God is a gift of Jesus, given not because of our deeds, or our past, or certainly even our heritages, but solely through Jesus' work for us on the cross. Armed with that reality, perhaps we modern Christians ought to ask ourselves the questions in today's gospel that really challenge our own status quo. Are we going to do the works like what Jesus did? Or do we believe that whatever we ask in Jesus' name, he will do it? Or do we believe indeed that Jesus is the the way, the truth, and the life? Well, of course, all three of those things dredge up so many problems. What if the power of God is not as manifest in us as it was in Jesus? Or How do we come up with an answer for that? But on the other hand, what if it is? That would surely change things in ways that might turn our world upside down. And what if we pray for something in Jesus' name and it doesn't happen? How are we going to explain that? Anybody ever have that happen to them? Yet if what God really, if if what God, what if God really does hear and answer every single prayer that we make in Jesus' name, whether he answers them in exactly the way that we want them to be answered or not. And the whole exclusive claim, I am the way, the truth, and the life, 
no one comes to the Father except through me, how do we insist on that in a very pluralistic society where the prevailing philosophy says that many different pathways lead to God? Well, now that I've specifically brought up these hard questions that Scripture throws at us today, I guess I have to at least say something about them. I, for one, have seen miraculous healings, and so I don't personally worry about whether the works of God are being manifested in us, because I think that often they are. I wish they would be even more, but I have seen God's power at work for myself in Christians today. And like many of you, I have sometimes prayed for things And what I prayed for didn't happen. Sometimes, of course, I think the answer is no, at least to the thing that I am specifically praying for, but yes to the best outcome for what I prayed for. And sometimes I do not know why a prayer is not answered, but I expect that God someday will show me. Nevertheless, so many of my prayers have been answered that I have learned to trust God to answer my prayers in the name of Jesus for the best. For those who say that prayer doesn't work, well, that's just not my experience. I'm just not always sure whether or not they've really tried it all that hard. And then finally, about the exclusive, and you could even say exclusionary, claims that Jesus makes for himself I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, the simple answer to that one is that we Christians know that these claims are true. I mean, if you have experienced the power of Jesus' forgiveness and his compassion and steadfast love, then you will know for yourselves that Jesus is actually telling the truth. What's more is that we know that this claim is true not just for us, but for everybody. Because God loves not just us, but everybody, even those that do not know him. For us not to share the love and the forgiveness of Jesus would simply be hoarding grace for ourselves. It would simply be selfish. But we can speak the truth of what we know from our own experience without judgment. Other people may, and in fact will, disagree with us, and they are perfectly free to do so. It is not our place to condemn them for that. What kind of witness of Christian love would that ever be? We can only say what we have come to know gently and without self-righteousness or judgment, but also without apology and let the Holy Spirit lead people as God sees fit. If we Christians actually did all these things, these three things, gently and consistently, trust in God's power, expect prayer to work, and point to Jesus as the way to the Father, then these things would change us more and more on a daily basis, and they certainly would change the status quo of our world. And the status quo of the world needs to be changed, even if doing so will provoke reaction. Because there is injustice all around us. There are people who are in despair and who suffer in our own neighborhoods. There are people, even in this land of plenty, who are suffering, whether physically, emotionally, or spiritually. There are people here in this land of opportunity who may have enough of things and yet at the same time who have lost hope and have become discouraged. But God is about making things new. Let me close with a story. About a year after I came uh, to Pittsburgh, which is a pretty long time ago, I listened to the prevailing advice of our diocesan leaders at the time, and that was that church groups, especially vestries and other kinds of uh, 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 planning committees, 
uh, should go away uh, from time to time for long-range planning. I guess the idea was that to get people away from home help people, would help people focus on different ways of doing things. So I dutifully planned a retreat for our vestry at some uh, retreat center across town, which took about 45 minutes to get to. It was planned well ahead, uh, but on the Monday before we were to leave, about four of the nine vestry members called to tell me that they would not be able to come at all, and then a fifth called to say that he uh, would not be able to go uh, because he couldn't leave town. Well, I was very despondent. Um, I'd had a lot of hope that it would give us a chance really to pray and to think about the future. But with over half unable to come, that would leave us without a quorum. My high hopes were, were pretty much dashed. So I called the retreat leader uh, that we had engaged and gave him the news. Wait, he said. Didn't one of the five that dropped out say that he could come if it were held at the church in town? Yes, I answered. Well, then, that would give you a quorum, the retreat leader said. Move it back to the church and go with the ones who can come and who can be there. And so we did. And that Saturday meeting in our guild room just here in the church was a significant planning meeting, it turned out, that charted our sense of mission for years to come. Going away for planning retreats had actually never been a common practice in this parish before, a status quo break. And yet, perhaps the more important status quo uh, breaker was the renewed mission and vision that God gave us on that day that we met. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. These are words to shake up any human life because it tells you that you are something more than you think you are. And it may even change the world. And that is what Jesus does. Amen. The Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Form 2 of the Prayers of the People is found on page 385 of the Book of Common Prayer. 
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for all our missionaries at home and abroad, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the President and the Congress and our government, and also for our enemies, that our hearts may be transformed. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. We remember the sick and those who care for them. We remember the ministries we support through outreach, Shepherd's Heart and the Eucharistic ministry. We celebrate and give thanks for those celebrating their birthdays this week, Linda Getz, Bill Keller, and Michael Aber, and those celebrating their anniversaries this week, Michael and Gretchen Kurzawa, and Dan and Jill Squire. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Thomas. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Father, we also pray <clears throat> on this Mother's Day for all mothers and all those who exercise motherhood. O oh Lord our God, your Son Jesus Christ knew the love of his own mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, from his birth. On this day, when we give honor and thanks for all mothers everywhere, bless all women who are mothers, or who would be mothers, or who offer a spiritual motherhood to others, for they all reflect your love to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. God's peace, Matthew. Richard, God's peace. Peace of the Lord be with you, Daryl. Louise, Bert, peace be with you. John, peace. Uh, Welcome to our broadcast uh, online today. Uh, I know that many of you who have been following the news uh, will realize that Governor Wolf has indicated that Allegheny County will be moving from a red status to a yellow one. 
uh, in an email that we received from the diocese, the bishop says, however, that will not make a difference to how we are doing things right now. Um, he is being advised by a particular committee uh, about when it would be best to safely reopen the churches and how to go about doing that, but it's not now. So we miss you, and I guess we're going to continue missing you because uh, things have to change and get a little better before uh, we can welcome you back into our building. There is, however, a great deal going on. <clears throat> Father Chips continues to teach his class for those of you who want to take it via email. Next Sunday is Rogation Sunday, and uh, it's a time when we pray for a bountiful harvest and for those who work in the land and in the seas so that we may have food to eat. So um, we will bless the soil as we do every year, and then we will put little bags of the blessed soil out front um, in front of the door of the church after the service for anyone either in the parish or in the neighborhood who would like to take some of that blessed earth back to their own garden. We continue to try to reach out to those especially who are living alone. Um, if there is someone in trouble that we don't know about, please do contact us and let us know so that we can reach out and give pastoral support. Um, I hope that you are receiving the news to know that is being sent out on a regular basis. Uh, and finally, let me say um, Happy Mother's Day, especially to all of you who are women out there, and thank you for the incredibly bright reflection of God's love that you provide to us as mothers. May God bless you. Walk in lo our love as Christ gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give, to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, has died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink 
of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the whole, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our, our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus, body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ preserve you unto everlasting life. The body of Christ keep you in everlasting life. Please, 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father you have graciously, graciously accepted, accepted us as living members of your Son, Son our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. And, you and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. And blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you now and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.